Welcome back to San Antonio. It's 10 to nothing, and the folks wearing the colors of Purdue are the ones who are standing and cheering right now. You're looking at Michael Bishop on the sideline. Here comes the kick. Last one by Button was in the end zone. This one is returnable, and this is Murphy at the goal line. He is a 4 2 2 sprinter. And he ran into his own blocker and is going to be stopped just short of the 30 yard line. That was Bell who made the tackle 28 yards on the return. Injured Purdue player at the 28 yard line. Doug Withers is the man who is down and being attended to by the training staff of the Boilermakers. Ron Michael Bishop needs to. To get things started for his Kansas State offense. Been a little slow starting. You go back to you talked about how he was at the banquet, but he's had pressure on him. Chikeo Kiefer makes the first sack on him. Then the interception, Billy Gustin. And then the hit by Roosevelt Colvin coming around the corner and stealing the football away from him. But he's a big play quarterback. He can do it with his arm and he can do it running the football. He can change this game I, right back around. I thought on the last series of the first quarter when they ran uh, the speed option back into uh, this side of the field just before the fumble that they looked as though they were getting a little bit more in sync. But then they turned it over. Bishop going to take the ball for maybe a gain of one. Mitrion is there to make the tackle and then helps him up. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Ron, remember right after the opening kickoff, I told you that it looked and sounded like Kansas State was ready to play football. Well, there is a difference, as you've been pointing out, between intensity and focus. These guys, offensively and defensively, have been getting an earful because they haven't been playing under control, not running proper routes, not listening to the snap count, not getting into position offensively and defensively. That's where they're short. Short drop. It's a quarterback draw. This is a design play as he'll take it out of the 35. You could see he was right behind that big guard that they pulled. Yeah, and you can see now, right now, that Bill Snyder is going to try to get Michael Bishop involved in this football game as a running back. He gained 899 yards rushing uh, during the season, carried 23 times versus Texas A&M. So he's a hard-nosed, tough quarterback that not only throws the football, but will run it up inside. Well, that's his longest run of the night. It's a gain of eight. Here comes the pressure from the outside, and they throw the screen. Hickson, and that is a nice recovery defensively. Mitrion is there, and also Fells. You could see him coming over the top, and I'm not sure he got the first down. No, he's short. Willie Fells, the middle linebacker, has had an excellent first half. He leads the team with 100 tackles. He was an 80, 189 pound wrestler in high school. And wrestlers make good football players because they understand leverage. Well, you see the smile on his face because, again, K State is going to have to punt, and this is three times that they've had to punt it away. Clock runs as we're about to go under 11 minutes left in his opening half. Again, the ball is not long, but this one is fielded and the tackle made immediately on Sutherland. But that one, he didn't let hit the turf and bounce, and as a result, it's only 37 yards. And again, good coverage on this punt by Kansas State. And you know what? What the Kansas State coaches are all thinking about right now, somebody has to turn the tide. Maybe somebody on defense, get a turnover, big play, big hit, offensively a big play, and then you're just one play away from getting back in this ball game. Conley got downfield to make the tackle on special teams. Well, look at his field position average. This is one of the worst for Purdue. They stretch it. Chapman tries to bounce it outside, and that's the longest gainer by the running back tonight as Crabtree will take it out close to the 35-yard line. When you look at this Purdue football team, it's a young offensive football team. They only have one senior starter, so uh, next year ought to be a big year for this Purdue offensive unit. But that entire offensive line, Mike, actually only one of the reserves will is a senior everybody else an underclassman from a shotgun gets it away and right through the hands of Gabe Cox 
Travis Oaks, the middle linebacker, number 50, with pressure on Drew Brees. Didn't give him a chance to get this football. Had to get it away very quickly. But again, it looked like a football that was catchable. Like it went right through his hands. You know, the other thing, when you watch Purdue run uh, offensive line-wise, they do a lot of cut blocking at the line of scrimmage. The defensive linemen get chopped around their knees, and they don't like that. And by about the third or fourth quarter, you don't get much of a pass rush because guys are worrying about their knees for the beach. <laughs> they get a little frustrated. You're right. Breeze steps up, buys some time, and just throws that one into the turf. It was very good coverage by Carter on Randall Lane. And, and I want to go back to what you said. You know, one guy that could change this game around quick is Allen. And he's got to crowd again. He comes in with a bounce. I but like those. I like his hold, style. Holding his hands up, saying, cheer for me, because I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I lead the nation, and let me show you how. <laughs> I like his style. Four punts in the first quarter. That's an Alamo Bowl record by Purdue. See if they come after him. They've been getting folks free in the middle, K-State. And the ball goes through his hands. Good heavens, what else can happen? Picked up by K-State and dropped. They battle for it at the one and recovered. Nope, still not recovered. At the one-foot line, that may be the play that wakes up Kansas State. Kansas State, the ball recovered by Lorzell. High snap, but threw right to the hands. And Kansas State bouncing the ball around, trying to, you always tell your player, just try to scoop it in the end zone. But it is K-State's football. And they are about 18 inches away. Put an asterisk by that play because this game, whole game may change with this play. An asterisk by that one. And that snap from center was an absolute rocket. And he just lost his concentration and it went out. Quarterback sneak. No signal. And there was a flag down on the near side as Fells is underneath that whole stack someplace. And usually that's off sides where that was thrown. Let's we'll see if we're. Uh... Yes. By alignment off side. Right over the nose, right over the center. I think Nugent, 82, yeah. is the man who jumped in there. So now they moved it to about nine inches away. Allen in the backfield along with Goolsby. Going to throw the fade to the corner. Touchdown, McDonald. Well, the, the punting game has been close to disastrous for Purdue all night, and finally it crumbled on him and cost him the first score of the night. It really did, and Darnell McDonald used his 6 3 frame on this. Fade route and uh, caught the touchdown pass. He had 75 receptions during the year for nine touchdowns. Add another one. Martin Gramatica to attempt the extra point. And he got it. 9.49 left until halftime. So let's take a break. Our new score, Purdue 10, Kansas State 7. We'll be right back. Well, the K-State fans are now aroused, and they have good reason to be. They're on the scoreboard with an interesting call with <laughs> first down and inches at the goal line, Mike. Yeah, they uh, go to split backs and throw the fade and get their 6-3 receiver on Henry Bell, a uh, 5'11 corner. Felt those almost like feeling they take the easy way. How about these numbers? 
In 20 minutes and 11 seconds of football, there have been 14 op offensive possessions in this ballgame. That's oh. a lot of start and stammer. Yeah. <laughs> start and stop. Start and stammer and stop. Clopton. He's free. Clopton is finally going to be tackled at the 49 yard line by Butler. Yeah, the Butler did it, but uh, Clopton setting up good field position for Drew Brees. Just hits this middle return, just gets some good blocks, got a little wiggle to him. Then Butler makes the tackle, but uh, Purdue sets up shop in good, good field position. Well, that's a great return. The interesting thing in watching that, to show you the kind of speed Butler has, he's still headed on Cruz. He had not hit passing gear yet and still ran him down. But great field position for Drew Brees and Purdue. Quick pass, and it's that slip screen again, and Jones going to be stopped at around the 45-yard line. Well, ni nice block by Randall Lane, the inside receiver. When you throw that bubble screen, your receiver's got to get on the outside right now and make a block. Watch number 84 right here with, with this good block that sets up Isaac Jones to break right behind him for good yards. And, of course, the reason you can block downfield, as you know the rule in the colleges, as long as it's thrown behind the line of scrimmage, that is perfectly all right. That one hit at the line of scrimmage and tipped by Beisel. Monty Beisel tipped it at the line of scrimmage, and that's three times that we will not know if Drew Brees was on the money or not because the ball is knocked down. McIntosh has two. Yeah, all defensive line coaches, Mo Lattimore, talked all week about get your hands up the line of scrimmage even if you're getting blocked and a lot of times we talked about this Purdue's offensive line blocks low they'll take they'll go and the block low and so you're you, they're trying to bring the hands down of the defensive linemen nine of 23 62 yards and a touchdown for Drew Brees third down and they need to take it to the 40 and a half yard line option play Brees keeps it gonna have the first down McIntosh will finally make the tackle on him well the reason the running game and there's a flag down but the reason the running game's working so well is uh, Kansas State's forced to take some of their linebackers out against these sets of Purdue's and the draw play and the option play now worked well for Drew Brees I think too many men on the field for yeah. Kansas State. Yep, sure was. There's Jeff Kelly, and there's the linebacker. Three linebackers set, which Kansas State plays with all the time. They've only been able four times to have the three linebackers on the field. Two linebackers set, which is going to be the majority of the time. They've had 17 times. One linebacker set, that's nine times, which means two linebackers are standing over there. And they're not only losing their ability, Ron, they're inspirational leaders when they're on the field. So a problem for Kansas State tonight matching up. Well, they're still substituting here, and they're going to have to get somebody off the field. Don't they have 12 out yeah, there? Yeah, they right? got 12 again. Yep, they do, and they're running at the last minute. Uh, Proctor trying to get him off the field. This uh, Purdue offense is beginning to do just what they wanted to do against K-State, and that has had them confused. Ball is hit. Was it a forward pass? An incomplete forward pass. Arm was going forward. It was Joe Bob Clements who hit him. And, Ron, we've talked all year about walk-ons. Joe Bob Clements was a walk-on, came to Kansas State as a tight end, earned a scholarship before the 96th season. We have an incomplete pass on the play. There's no flag on the play. Clements had a big ball game in the Nebraska game, had nine tackles in the big win. Mike Stoops, defensive coordinator, talking to the field, trying to get lined up. Looks red hair is going to go to gray here tonight. <laughs> here comes the blitz again. Got a man.
off to Light, Cohen, Niedrich, Kobe, and Gorin, the offensive line, because they gave him time to put up a touch pass. You know, Isaac Jones has caught five touchdowns and make it six. He played quarterback in high school. He understands the passing game. Dorsch with the extra point. And I think that is a huge answer by Purdue to come right back after they had handed a gift off the special teams to K-State. Yeah, they handed a gift. But remember their special teams play. They got out to the 50-yard line. But here's just a law pass against Carter. The defensive back, Isaac Jones with the touchdown. But Ron, again, go back to the kickoff return that set Purdue in great field position. That was a little bit of an answer by Chris Clopton. game with just under 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter with Purdue still leading Kansas State 17 to 7. The Boilermakers have the ball on their own 20 yard line first down and 10 after a Wildcat punt. Side of it. Real historical site in, in this state and the comment it's always made. I can't believe it's that small. K-State that was the longest drive of the game 38 yards 502 off the clock and no points. Here comes the safety blitz and they throw the play that should work against it and he couldn't get it back inside as Sutherland made the reception and with that safety gone Mike they might have broken that one for a very long play. Well what the formation was was three receivers close together which called a bunch set and then Vinnie Sutherland came in motion. Drew Brees just raised up through the quick screen you see all the receivers so close together and now they all become blockers. Sutherland catches the football good blocks downfield See Gabe I mean? Cox with a good block if he could have cut the thing back inside it had a chance of adding some real big yardage breeze they want to throw back on the screen and they do and Crabtree there's nothing Simino, what a nice defensive play as he stays at home and tackles them for a big loss made a big play out of Smith Center Kansas the linebacker that's led this team in tackles all year was the only member of the Kansas State defense back there in good, good shape. Stratton checks into the lineup number 89. And at Stratton, for the most part, they don't use him just to block. He is their best pass catching in. Number 89, a redshirt freshman out of Oak Brook, Illinois. It's Isaac Jones in motion, bottom of the screen. Breeze, quarterback draw, nothing doing. Better job there by the defensive line. Andre Rowe and Joe Bob Clements. They had a little game going on in the defensive line. And that stopped the quarterback draw, Drew Brees. Seventeen to seven if you just joined us. Clock running at eight minutes and thirty-five seconds to play. Third quarter. Purdue, a two touchdown and in some quarters more underdog in this ballgame, up by ten. Breeze. Long throw, got it complete, and Daniels will pick up the first down and come out of bounds at the 34. Cooper was there to make the play on him. Cooper shows you his speed from that strong safety position, making that play. Brent Venerable is the linebacker coach on his way to Oklahoma after this game, having a conversation with his outstanding strong safety. So Danny Rogers prepares to kick it away. David Miller, the nation's leading punt returner, or David Allen, I should say, standing and waiting for the return. High pass over his head. Second one we've had tonight, and K State had to return on it, and he missed it. And K State will recover it for a touchdown. When the ball goes over your head, 
to scoop it out of the end zone, take the safety. That's what he tried to do, but he overran it. You do not want to give this ball. For Sandifer, that is the second one. Joe Tiller timing the punter, but the snap goes over his head, and uh, Looks like everything Abbott. breaks down. Abbott winds up. That extra point is no good. Grammatica yanks it, and it goes wide left. First one that he has missed all year, and consider this as we go to break. The only two touchdowns K-State has in his ballgame are from errant snaps from center. We'll be right back. Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey, and Adrian Carson coming to you from a very noisy Alamo Dome in San Antonio. This is a good move right here by Joe Tiller to rest Roosevelt called and a lot of times you'll bring your backup defensive lineman in when you've got the other team down the field inside the 20 25 yard line. Give them a little bit of a rest. This is the worst starting position by K State tonight. Here's where you got to be really careful of Michael Bishop and you can't get lazy on any step. They'll go with the running game and it's going to be Allen who was tackled by Fells close to the five. Michael Bishop took a long time at the line of scrimmage there. What he's doing right now Ron is he's looking he's going up to the line of scrimmage with a formation. He's looking to the sideline for Bill Snyder if he wants to change the play. It's given more of an opportunity to call the play based on what they're in defensively. Well, David Allen is out. Only the fullback Goolsby is there, and Paris, number 87, comes in at wide receiver. Ball is fumbled. It's in the end zone. Touchdown, David Nugget. Nugent. David Nugent with the touchdown. Never got the football. David Nugent, a junior from Collierville, Tennessee, just outside of Memphis, makes the recovery. And Mike Godfrey's right. Brian Goolsby, who doesn't carry that often, just never got connection from Bishop. Good. And with 52 seconds left in the third quarter, our new score Purdue 24 and Kansas State 13. Watch the handoff. Michael Bishop almost like flipped it into the hands of Brian Goolsby, and they just never had it. Mike, he also was looking at Wakori. I mean, Wakori was almost there to take the handoff for him. Yeah, number 49, Chuki Wakori, was right in the backfield. And you could see the frustration of Bill Snyder well, on the sideline. Bill's only given away one tonight. He, he's got one more to give because Purdue's given two away. <laughs> So Nugent makes the recovery, and of course, that's the dream of any lineman, to recover for a touchdown. And David scores for Purdue and puts his team back up now by 11 points with that miss of the extra point by Gramatica. There's a good look at David. Collierville just to the south of Memphis, Tennessee. Wound up heading to West Lafayette, Indiana to play his college football. And right now is extremely proud. Here comes Button's kickoff. Murphy. Two yards deep, he'll return it. Remember I told you this is the 4-2 sprinter. And he ran right into the man. That's Bell who is there to make the tackle. Following the Purdue touchdown, a Michael Bishop interception set up a Travis Doors 26-yard field goal, which put the Boilermakers up by 14 with four seconds remaining in the third quarter. 
However, early in the fourth quarter, the Wildcats move the ball down the field. And as we rejoin the action with just over 12 minutes remaining in the game, Kansas State has the ball on the Purdue eight-yard line, facing third down and three in the 1998 Alamo Bowl, right here on ESPN Classic. We are back. You see the clock, 12.08 remaining in the ball game, and it's third down Kansas State. And they need to take it to the five and a half yard line to move the sticks. Bishop in the option play gets a block at the five, and they will have the first down as David Allen gets belted out of bounds by John Reeves. And the speed option, and Michael Bishop takes it right to the defensive end, kicks it out. But Brian Goolsby again with another nice block that sets up this first down. Watch number 30 come out of the backfield and make this block for David Allen. The play clears for the Kansas State. Henry down. Bell. 12 for 80 yards for David Allen tonight. First and goal Wildcats. Allen again. Right side. Touchdown K-State. Brian Handley with a huge block. And that is the first offensive touchdown in this ball game that K-State has taken the offense and driven it down the field. Without taking it over at the six-inch line or recovering a fumble in the end zone by the defense or special teams. Gramatica to attempt the extra point. Missed his first of the year on that last touchdown. It's a good pass and knocks this one home. So there's a timeout. 11.59 that left in our ball game. It's a seven-point Purdue lead. to 20 Purdue leading Kansas State just under 10 minutes to play and Drew Brees is in the Alamo Bowl record book for the number of attempts tonight he's 19 of 44 but he's thrown three interceptions 168 yards and two touchdowns Crabtree takes it for short yardage into the middle that's a Chris Johnson who's down at the bottom of the pile along with Jeff Kelly. And one of the reasons he's in that record book is because their inability to run the football. They, the only chance they got of moving the football is uh, Drew Brees throwing it. And Ron, you talk about changing times. I was reading where Bob Greasy in his three year career threw 28 touchdown passes at Purdue, and Drew has had 36 touchdown passes in the regular season. So you talk about changing times in the Big Ten and at Purdue. Here comes the blitz in the middle, and they give it to Crabtree, and he breaks it. Crabtree will have the first down, and he's still going across midfield. Carter finally stopped a 16-yard game. Well, Jay Crabtree probably knows a lot of these Kansas State players because he played at Coffeyville Junior College in Kansas, where he rushed for 24 touchdowns last year. <laughs> Purdue with success recruiting the junior colleges. First down, they put the ball at the 47. They keep it on the ground again. Crabtree has five, has 10. Counted off at around 15 yards. Carter will make the tackle. And Coach Stoops, well, again, rocking and reeling in that chair upstairs because he knows that as tough as the offensive output has been tonight, only one touchdown, but the offense really, uh, that if they go down by 14 again, it's going to be a big mountain to climb, Mike. Yeah, and their offense just isn't playing that well. But when you go to a one-back set, spread people all out over the uh, football field, your run support sometimes can get uh, mistakes. And that's what's happening to Kansas State. They go with a third running play in a row. This could be a Purdue record. <laughs> Going back to the days of Bob Greasy. Now, <laughs> Bob was handed off. Simino makes the tackle. You know, it was interesting in asking Joe, I said, 
the, the nicest flattery that you can have is when somebody starts doing what you're doing. How much around the Big Ten have you seen some of your offense beginning to spring up? And he said, here and there. Is the to see more one back and no back stuff, particularly well, coach, one back. Coaches steal a lot of things off that tape. Crabtree, nine carries, 44 yards now. They fake it to him. Breeze gets his pass away complete. And they will give him forward progress enough for the first down to Isaac Jones. Adrian Karsten, what do you got for us? Ron, this offense we're watching by Purdue tonight is certainly not Big Ten style offense. You know, 45 attempted passes, 46. This is something that uh, Coach uh, Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator, says, you know, you don't have to have big studs across the front. We've been with this 12 years and we're still learning. It's an offense born in a high school back in Thousand Oaks, California, for crying out loud. You don't need the big studs. We can finesse a little bit. Sometimes two backs, sometimes no backs. They're going to stick with it and keep running run and keep being uh, successful. Yep, you're right. It's Sherman Oaks, I believe, Adrian, is where that uh, high school started using it with the, the no backs. But the Oaks was right. It just well, wasn't a, a thousand. Well, you talk about what Adrian is talking about in both these tackles, Matt Light. Uh, Jim Coletto signed him as a tight end, so they moved him to tackle. And Brandon Gore in the other tackle played basketball at Muncie Southside in a nationally ranked high school team. So it gives you an idea that their tackles are very athletic to handle speed rushes off the outside. Second down. Breeze sets nicely, gets it complete, and stepping out of bounds is Randall Lane. 652 left in the ball game. Carter and Proctor were out there on the cover. This whole Kansas State defensive team is going to have nightmares of this Purdue offense. <laughs> all the formations, all the throws. Well, Bill Snyder said in our meeting, I said, what what do they finally do to you? And he said, they just out formation you, formation you to death. Frustrate you. Breeze well, had a receiver run on the zig and someone else zagged and Cooper was the closest man to it. I think Cox was the man that he wanted and Cox ran like a toward the post. He yeah, should have stayed outside. I think uh, Drew Breeze misread that pass. Travis Dorch to attempt the field goal and this one's going to come from 37 yards away from the near hash mark. Travis, a freshman out of Bozeman, Montana, 6'6", 192 pounds, has won from 25 and 26 tonight. Good pass, and this one is right down the Alamo. So the Purdue Boilermakers, with that field goal, push their lead back to 10 points. And we'll take a break with 6.44 remaining. The Big Ten right now up by 10. Well, we're back. 6.44 remaining, 30 to 20. Purdue on top. Purdue is a huge underdog in this ball game. And there's the man, Frank Murphy. And he wants the football, and he can get it. Let's see if it's returnable. Yep, it is. It's in the field of play from the four. Tackled inside the 15 by Stelma. First down from the 13 yard line. Bishop, deep retreat, pumps it. Going long, got a man open. And McDonald makes the catch. Flag goes down, but he will score it easily from 87 yards. Let's call it 88 yards. Billy Gustin tried to run into him to get the pass interference, but Darnell McDonald with good concentration brought that pass in for the score. And just like that, Kansas State back in his ballgame. Pass interference on the defense. By rule, you have a touchdown. Penalty is a
What good concentration by McDonald, Ron, as he made that catch. 1,092 receiving yards this season. Gramatica to attempt the extra point and try to make it a three point ball game again with 623 remaining. And he does. Busting coverage by Purdue in the secondary because Darnell McDonald is going to come down the field and he, there's nobody going to pick him up. Billy Gust Gustin just tries to run him down knowing that uh, the ball's coming to him. Gets the interference call, but McDonald, with good concentration, watches eyes, just watches the football, brings it in, and then takes it in for the touchdown. Good arm strength by Michael Bishop. Threw it a long way. And Justin disgusted with himself. It's one of those things where with the college rule, the heck if he had known, just go ahead and tackle him. Yeah, I'm not sure whether he was supposed to be over the top or someone, the corner, sat down on the play. Henry Bell, it may have been Henry Bell supposed to continue with the wide receiver, Darnell McDonald. They're now saying officially 88 yards, and that is an Alamo Bowl record by McDonald to pull his team to within three. Clopton two yards deep, and he'll go down on one knee. Ron, two things. Purdue, first of all, has played a very good football game. They get a young team. Now, this is a team they're going to have to be reckoned with next year in the Big Ten. Drew Brees will be a candidate for a lot of awards next year. Kansas State, I still think, and I'm still saying they're the victim, you know, of not being picked up in this bowl alliance. The last loss. BCS, Mike. BCS, and, uh, and I think it's, it's hurt them tonight in this ball game. They're trying to get back in this thing. Crabtree is going to be stopped for about a yard loss. Carter came over from uh, his cornerback position, one of the first men there. Right now, what Joe Tiller wants to see happen is let the clock move, but they're going to have to move the chain several times to get it down where they want it. Yeah, without a doubt now, Purdue needs a couple first downs. 5.48 left to go in this ball game. Takes a real shot from McGraw. You can see John come up quickly. Cooper was there as well. And now decision time, third down. And from where they're marking it, it's still going to be about nine yards for the first. Ronan, as you look at this play, Purdue will try to find a matchup where they like it the best. And they they tried to have tried unsuccessfully to go against Cooper tonight, number 40. The two of 15 on third down conversions, and they missed their last eight. Cox makes the catch, and also Jones, I beg your pardon, and Cooper is right there to make the hit on him. They're not blue, and it's cool. But what happened on that play is a man coverage, and Jared Cooper ran across with Gabe Cox, and he read the screen. Watch number 40, Jared Cooper, as he goes across. Now he reads the screen. Now he breaks up and makes the tackle and forces this punt. Nice, nice play by Cooper. Daniels again, the man to snap. Low pass from center, gets his kick away, and this spiral's not going to turn over. Allen from the 42. That's the reason he leads the nation in kick return. Danny Rogers, the punter, made the tackle. And that's been the player of the game for Kansas State on offense. He has brought some excitement with him tonight. 35 yards in the kick and 32 on the return. 
turn. He just bursts here. I mean, he just shows you his speed, flat out cutting ability, and working up the football field. to play and K-State can smell momentum going in their direction here comes the quarterback draw still on his feet and Bishop will take it